Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is What's Say DIY, and as you may be able to tell by my desktop here, this is not Windows, this is Ubuntu, and we've got Steam open, so that means only one thing. We're finally doing the Linux benchmarks for the Ryzen budget build. Uh, it was, there was a little bit of a learning curve, not gonna lie, for doing uh, benchmarks on Linux and gaming on Linux and everything, but, you know, nevertheless, I persisted and I've got the results. So I ran a ton of tests uh, to see how Windex performance compared to Ubuntu performance with the Ryzen PC build. I was kind of curious to see how it would go. Um, I had a feeling they'd hopefully be similar. Gaming was the only thing I was a little bit not too sure about, but let's talk about the numbers. But before that, uh, just a quick reminder what the system specs are. Okay, uh, so again, a Ryzen build, uh, and let's see what the numbers look like. Now, the first batch of tests I was able to do a cross-platform comparison on were the Unigen tests. That'd be Unigen Heaven and Unigen Superposition. So on Ultra, obviously, the system really probably shouldn't be running Ultra. Uh, for OpenGL on Windows, we were seeing scores uh, average out to about 1561 where in uh, Linux, we saw them averaging out to 1486. So less than 100 points difference, not too bad. Uh, for medium settings uh, for Heaven, which is probably more in the target range for a system with these specs, we saw an average score of 2013 for uh, Windows in OpenGL versus uh, 1879 in uh, Ubuntu. And now that's about a 200 point difference, a little bit bigger divide. Uh, then for superposition, again, a test that's super intense and on the extreme setting, we saw an average score on Windows and OpenGL of 1165 versus an average score of 1148 on uh, Ubuntu. Where we saw a bigger leap was with the medium settings. Again, when it, Windows pulled out a little bit more ahead with an average score of 4970 versus an average score of 48.78 on Linux. Now, I'm not sure why the spread gets wider as we turn down settings. Probably has to do with optimization of software and things like that. But as you can see, we're getting similar performance on both operating systems, which I find to be encouraging. Uh, now, the next test I was able to do across both platforms was Geekbench 4, uh, but only the CPU tests. Uh, there is the open CL test uh, for graphics available in Geekbench, which works on Windows with no issue, but on Ubuntu, it seems to be broken. When I was running it, I was getting the same error message that I saw on forums. We were able to get the CPU test scores. So for single core on Windows, we saw an average score of 3820. On Ubuntu, for single core, an average score of 4301. Now that was a big, uh, fairly large difference uh, for Ubuntu in the lead there. And then for multi-core, we saw on Windows an average score of 12,866. And then on Ubuntu, an average score of 14,628. I found it very interesting that Ubuntu scored that much higher with the CPU tests uh, in Geekbench. Pretty big difference. I, I was surprised. I was surprised. Now, because we weren't getting that additional graphical performance uh, comparison. I did uh, run GFX Bench, which is an open GL test you can run on Windows and Linux, just so that we could get some cross comparison going. Uh, now, interesting here as well, um, the scores were fairly close, uh, most of them in the, within the margin of error, and you're seeing all of the different tests and how they compared, and we have the total frames results uh, which actually uh, Ubuntu pulled out way ahead in texturing and also the 1080p driver overhead test that has the off screen, the, the big difference there. Uh, and as you can see, for most of them, there is at least a small margin, some within the margin error, but Ubuntu is on top for basically all of them. And if we go to FPS, we see a similar story. Ubuntu is pulling ahead with the exception of two tests, the two texturing uh, tests. Even though the Ubuntu was ahead with the total frame count, for FPS, uh, it fell behind by a decent portion uh, compared to Windows, which I thought was interesting that even though it had more frames, it had a lower frame per second count. But again, we see that they're super comparable. 
there isn't one operating system pulling ahead of the other that makes it so that you wouldn't want to consider them. And that was it for the simulation benchmarks that I ran. But next up was gaming. You're probably wondering, how did you uh, benchmark it? Uh, I used an open source frame counter that's similar to Fraps on Windows called GLX OSD. It's actually running right now on the GLX Gears uh, test that you can use to basically see if your graphics card is working. Um, and it, it creates an overlay similar to what you'd find in MSI Afterburner. And there's a benchmarking feature uh, where you can click a shortcut, just like with Fraps or others. And uh, afterwards, when you end the benchmark, it spits out this XML file that you can then upload to the GLX OSD site and it will unpack it and give you this really great data. Gameplay on Ubuntu was fantastic. I, again, ran everything on high settings. And let's take a look at the data compared to Windows gameplay. Now for CSGO, we had an average frame rate of 164.75 on Windows versus an average frame rate of 85.18 on Ubuntu. Now that is a big drop, I will admit. But again, this is everything maxed out. I know that the more dedicated CSGO players prefer lower settings, get a higher frame rate. This may seem way too low for you, depending on your preference, but if we get into graphical preferences, I mean, we could debate all day and everyone's gonna have a different opinion on what they're looking for in their gameplay. Uh, for me, I found it to be very playable. Of course, I am a very casual player of CSGO. Uh, we also saw a different range of highs and lows. Windows got a little bit higher at 295 versus 223 on Ubuntu and lows a bit lower on Ubuntu 44 versus the lowest point of 72 frames per second on Windows. So clearly frame rates are better on Windows for CSGO at this time, uh, but still definitely playable on Ubuntu. Now next up, Rocket League, my personal favorite game. On Windows, on average of 138.944 frames per second versus 91.64 on Ubuntu. Again, a big frame drop of actually the highest frame rate uh, being on Ubuntu being closer to the average on Windows. Highest on Ubuntu was 137 versus 183 on Windows and then lows of 63 on Ubuntu versus 103 on Windows. I was a little disappointed to see that much lower of a frame rate. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now the next two games, you're gonna see something different. With that, Portal 2 on Windows, we saw an average frame rate of 283.689, and then on Ubuntu, an average frame rate of 285.21. Now that difference is definitely within the margin of error, but you see, definitely closer. The highest frames per second was 301 on Ubuntu versus 290 on Windows, and then lows on Ubuntu 185 versus a perfect match of 185 on Windows. So Portal 2 obviously has been out for a bit. Better chance for optimization, you see that they're basically equally matched on OS. As more drivers come out and time goes on, you do see that in games, that they become better optimized, they run better on the newer hardware, and I think Portal 2 right now is a great example of that, even across uh, operating system. And last but certainly not least, City Skylines, another favorite of mine. On Windows, we saw an average frame rate of 60.979 versus an average frame rate of 61.48 on Ubuntu. Now, definitely within the margin of error, but I was happy to see that those games stayed the same. Now, again, this is everything maxed out. Some people may find 60 frames per second to be a bit low. That's kind of getting into your console territory, so keep that in mind. You can lower things to get better performance. Highest frames per second were 89 on Ubuntu versus 74 on Windows, but the lows were lower on Ubuntu with 28 versus 45 on Windows. Now again, just like a Portal 2, we see a little bit of a closer uh, scores there between operating system and I found gameplay to be very similar across both platforms. And those are the scores from the testing I did on Linux to compare uh, Windows performance on this budget Ryzen system. And I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it'd be similar, but you never know until you see the numbers. Uh, and I was glad to see that the numbers were quite comparable with Ubuntu and Windows kind of trading places of being highest, but there was never a point where one like blew one out of the water. The only time where that came close, I would say, would be the frame rate results on CSGO on Windows, definitely a lot higher than um, saw on Ubuntu, but it was still playable. So if that's the one question we need to answer, can you play games on Ubuntu? Yes. You're probably thinking, if you're familiar with Linux, where's Pharonix? Why aren't you testing Pharonix? Um, 
The main goal of this video was to see how it compared to Windows, and so I wanted to um, compare against tests I had already ran in Windows previously, but also, to be honest, since I am still just kind of scratching the surface on x86 Linux, um, I don't feel that I could do the Pharonix testing suite justice at this time. Uh, I just don't know enough about it, and there's so much you can do with it uh, that I want to kind of explore it a little bit more. And maybe do a video in the future on that, comparing it to some other platforms. Uh, but I just didn't feel like at the time of this video that I was ready to dive into the Pharonix test suite, so that's why it's not included here with the other um, similar types of benchmarks. But that's gonna end it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Are you considering trying out x86 Linux? Have you done it before? Uh, let me know. But I'll link a lot of resources down in the description as well as my social media links if you wanna see any behind the scenes kind of stuff in the future. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.